Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth Ramirez. I'm a life coach and I have uh, started this series called Homeschool just to share some of um, my favorite people, my friends and family who homeschool and some of the people who helped me along my journey of homeschooling. Um, who I have today is Elizabeth Sharp. Um, she is a very dear friend to me. We did a girls ministry together. Um, and I got to get to know her, and she also was a huge encouragement along my homeschooling journey. Um, Elizabeth, uh, in addition to being an amazing person, she has a master's in education and counseling, um, and she's a marriage and family coach. She, um, she, what is really awesome about her is she's really for the family. She's all encompassing, all around, just like how are we gonna make this work? And she, um, she loves parents, she loves kids, and she loves husbands. She loves seeing that marriage unit just really flourish. Um, so we'll go a little bit over some of the cool things she does, but Elizabeth, do you wanna introduce yourself? Maybe something I didn't touch on? Uh, let's see, I've been married tomorrow for 22 years, so that's a milestone. And then I have a 17 year old who's gonna be a senior in high school who have homeschooled her her whole life. And I have a five-year-old who just turned five. He'll be starting kindergarten in the fall. Uh, I have a dog. His, her name is Marley. And let's see, I'm from the Bay Area and just recently located to Fort Worth, Texas on January 1st. And yeah, that's a good place. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Elizabeth, in addition to just being an awesome coach and, and just all-around person, um, you are actually like a homeschooling expert, if I dare say. And one of the topics I asked you to come on and speak today on is homeschooling while you work. Because you're a college professor. I and am. You have been doing that. You teach early childhood development. So I want to have you back on to pull out nuggets of teaching our kids and child development. <laughs> but right now for this segment, um, let's talk about what it's like to homeschool while working. Yeah, I think um, I think one of the biggest myths and misconceptions around homeschooling is that people don't work. And the reality is that uh, a lot of people do, um, particularly in the Bay Area where many times you need two incomes to survive. Um, a lot of people, uh, some people work traditional nine to five jobs and then some people work evening jobs and some people work from home um, or they're small business owners because um, I work at San Jose City College and I've always worked full time. My husband's worked full time, but and I also have a small business that I run. So um, it is possible. It is totally possible. I think the big thing that whoever's listening needs to reframe, and that is that we don't replicate the school system. Um, a lot of people say I could never homeschool because I can't do what schools do, which means that I never sat my child in front of the kitchen table from nine to three. Like we never ever sat that long and we never sat in front and did it the same way every day. We never did it um, exactly as schools do it because the whole beauty, whether you're homeschooling or you're doing um, distant education, is you do it what works for your family, what works for the child, and what you're trying to accomplish. What are your personal goals as a family? So I spend time coaching and training new homeschoolers around what do they want this to be for them because if you try to replicate the school system, you will fail because homeschooling by nature is not replicating this whole the school system. That doesn't mean that our children will not be successful and they can't move on to another grade and they can't um, graduate from high school and go to college or start a business or do missions work. Um, homeschooling children do all kinds of things after they're done with their uh, formal education. So they will be successful, but it does take what I always say, my three components of any success thing that you're trying to do is that you have to have the right mindset, you have to have the right tool set, and you have to have a, a community of support of like-minded people who are on the same journey as you. Um, I know um, our families didn't understand about homeschooling. I'm Mexican. My husband's black. Um, traditionally, our families were very weirded out by the homeschooling idea. Um, and so um, they didn't understand because they don't know anybody else who homeschools. All their friends um, do traditional school. And so 
uh, if you only hang out with people who do traditional schooling, homeschooling is going to be very weird. And so you have to find your tribe, whether that's online, which many of us right now, that's where we're at. We're online. And then as things open up and as things get um, more to a regular year, not this year, but they will, um, meeting up with people in person. And I know in the Bay Area, there are a lot of groups that are meeting up in person and are meeting out in parks and doing some in-person things uh, to support homeschooling families. So that's what I would start off with. You know, that is, that's awesome. We're gonna get into the practicality of homeschooling, but mm -hmm. I just wanna say, one of the biggest things that I've learned from you personally was the importance of tools. Mm -hmm. um, I think mindset comes something I work on, I work on with my clients, but you added a new tool to my toolbox of giving <laughs> tools. <laughs> so, you know, how, to, how to disperse tools. But um, I, first of all, well, let's tackle mindset because I think those are gr three great um, mm -hmm. uh, bullet points to just really get in there. Mindset, mm -hmm. you can do it. Right. Anybody can do it. You don't have to be educated formally. You don't have to have a degree. You don't, you can, I've coached many single parents who work and homeschool, believe it or not, they're in the Bay Area, they're in other states I've coached. Um, you, you have to realize that I'm choosing a homeschool for whatever reason, whether it's for a year, whether it's for a few months, whether it's forever, whatever it is for you that, that you're choosing this decision. And once you make that decision, you run with that. And you say, okay, now what, what do I need to uh, be successful? And at the end, I'll share some of the things I've put together to help parents be successful. And so once you've decided, okay, I'm in a homeschool, you do it. And then the second thing around mindset is that you really have to know why you want to homeschool because you may get pushback from loved ones um and it's really important as much as i love my loved ones um it's important to realize that you as a parent has made this decision and if you've made it with a partner um then you move forward and don't worry about what others think and the second thing is don't worry that your child's going to be screwed up because you can't screw up your child. So the other thing people get really weirded out about is I, my child's going to get behind. And my thing as a teacher, as a parent, is there's no such thing as children uh, getting behind. Um, that's, that's just not possible developmentally because children want to learn and children learn the things they need to learn as long as they're provided that opportunity. Um, if your child is going to return to traditional school next year, um, we might want to be a little bit more intentional about that. But in general, children are very resilient. And they're very flexible. So we don't have to worry. Um, I have not been a perfect homeschooling parent. I would lie to you if I said that I was. And to be honest, you know, I've been homeschooling now 12 years. We're going into senior year. Um, I'd like to say that I'm perfect now. I'm not. Um, and um, it has been different every year, and there have been seasons where I've done it better than other times. Um, there have been weeks I've done it better than other times. And so my child, Elizabeth knows my child. If you met my, my senior, um, while she's not a perfect kid, she's an amazing kid, and she is – she's doing some amazing things in her life right now. Um, she moved away from home uh, last year as a junior and is doing that. Um, that is an amazing skill set. So your children are going to be fine. I promise they're going to be fine as long as you get some good tools and you find a good community of support. You know, yes, I was just speaking with Shikesha and um, that's one of the biggest things she was talking about. It, it was about mindset and really understanding that, the purpose of doing the reason we do homeschooling really just um hunkering down on your foundation of why you're choosing to homeschool that's going to be in the middle of the night when you didn't get much sleep because you got a baby crying or you're just like i don't know i want to just not do this anymore that's going to be the thing that pushes you over the edge to keep going um and the reason why we homeschool, they're really close to our hearts. This is a big decision. And we go, a lot, we go against a lot of, of people who don't, don't mean to be mean, <laughs> people with good intentions who worry, um, but we need to remind them that we are equipped to teach our kids. We are equipped. We were yep. chosen. Mm -hmm. um, and we can learn. Um, I love that you, actually, we could talk about it a little bit. You have a parent teacher group on Facebook that's for mm -hmm. homeschoolers and non homeschoolers, people mm -hmm. who want to homeschool, people who want to supplement kids who are distance learning. Um, and this is another thing we'll, we'll transition into tools. Um, you learn along with your kids. 
Um, yep. I had to learn how to teach someone how to read. Mm -hmm. And that's nothing, I, it's nothing I've ever done before, but there's tons of resources. I yes. learned how to teach phonics and it's not, it's amazing. Actually, I learn more now than I ever, I mean, I learn things, new things all the time, right. um, teaching him science and everything. So, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about tools for mm -hmm. homeschoolers and what tools do you provide, Elizabeth? All right. So I always say you have to remember that there's only a few things that children really need. Okay. I think one of the things about our traditional educational system is we've added a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff that really statistically the research shows kids don't remember and nor do they need in life. Okay. If you really do some research, for example, I know that if you stopped and think about what did you do, what do you remember from high school? What do you remember from junior high? What do you remember from elementary school? Chances are you don't remember a whole heck of a lot. Okay. And, and that is because our education system is driven by standards that are driven by policy that are driven by bureaucrats who have have some kind of educational agenda to fulfill, right? And as a homeschooler, we are not driven by that, nor do we have to be driven by that. Do we want our children to be academically successful? Absolutely. So this is what I tell people. There's only a few things kids need to really know when they need to know how to read, right? Obviously, in whatever stage of the game they're at, and you can either choose, like Miss Elizabeth, to, to teach reading, or you can choose to do what I did, and that is my child um, has uh, five learning disabilities, and I needed her to have a very specialized kind of reading, writing program, and I tried to learn it, and in the end, I wasn't the best teacher for that subject and so sometimes there's a subject that you're not the best teacher for if my child decides to learn French I'm not teaching it I'm not learning it right and in the Bay Area is got so many resources so we we kind of um, tutored out so to speak because of her needs uh, language arts and and writing um, every el everything else I did and so they need to learn how to read they learn to learn how to write they need to learn how to do functional math. And I talk about functional math in the sense that um, there's only so much math we really need, okay? And I know the schools have convinced that I'm a college teacher and I have not had algebra, okay? I'm a college teacher and I always tell this and my daughter laughs at me all the time. I, I don't know how to multiply. I know how to multiply like my fives and my zeros and my twos and that's about it. Um, so math is not my strong suit at all. And my husband laughs at me all the time. He's like, when we're at a restaurant, we're trying to do a tip. He's like, you really homeschool and you really are a college teacher like like they're shocked that there are certain skills I don't have and yet what have I done I've learned how to use tools like a calculator I've learned how to um uh, overcompensate in a way that I can function in society and balance a checkbook and do all those things so our kids need to learn some very strong functional math meaning basic math and as they get older if they are ready to dive into pre-algebra and geometry by the way I've never had geometry I've never had calculus um, there's so many things I've never <laughs> And I run a small business, I homeschool, and I'm a college teacher. So it is possible to, um, that's, to me, I want you to ease up on the stress and realize that let's just take it one day at a time. What does this child need today? Okay, what do they need right now, not five years from now, okay? Um, and so stay in the moment. Stay in the present moment. If your child's nine, let's not talk about high school yet. Because the reality is homeschool is very easy till you get into the high school years. And in the high school years, you just got to be more intentional. But until ninth grade hits, it is a what I would call, I, I, I miss those days. Like those were the easy days as far as now entering senior year, okay? So they need to learn math. They need to have a large vocabulary. They really need to, to um, at all ages, vocabulary. Vocabulary is key to reading, writing, and communication. Okay, so um, fi uh, there are many, many programs and and uh, ways to acquire vocabulary. The, the easiest way to vocabulary use vocabulary is to use it yourself. So, like Elizabeth says, I've learned a lot of things as my child's learned a lot of things, and so that's really important. And then everything else, the science. Um, the social studies, I think um, I'm an unschooler. So philosophically, the way I've always homeschooled is I believe that it's my job to teach the core, ensuring that children have that core academic um, foundation, as we've talked about, and then that they got to choose what else they wanted to learn. So every year, and it's going to happen again very soon, I sit down my, my daughter and I look at the 12th grade science requirements and I print them out and I say, circle two you want to study this year. And she circles the two that she wants to study, and that's what we study. 
And that's it. I don't worry about teaching every standard and every science topic. And the story I tell is when my daughter was in second grade, we did a program called K through 12 Academy, which is an uh, online homeschooling charter in California. It's free. And we did that. And they send you all the curriculum, all set, ready to go. You don't have to do any planning. And that year in second grade, I guess you have to know the geology of rocks. And we opened up our rocks, and I had my rocks, and we began the lesson. And my daughter didn't care, and she doesn't care, and I didn't care. I don't care about rocks. She don't care about rocks. We didn't do rocks. And if you ask me right now, all the rocks of the world, I don't know. But guess what? I, um, I can keep a marriage together. I think that's important. So what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is there are just a few foundational things. I think if you are a Christian, Bible is really important. In fact, um, as my child got older, that became a big foundational um, tool that we needed to impart on her because she was going to leave our home someday. And so we wanted her to be equipped in the world of dealing with what the world deals. Deal. Life skills, cleaning, planning meals, chores, all that was homeschooling, uh, community service, serving your family, serving outside of your family. Um, all those were homeschooling, right? And so when people say, how do you work and how do you homeschool? I'm like, I'm always homeschooling. I don't know the difference. I don't know when I'm not homeschooling to the fact that my daughter, you know, have to say like, mom, enough. Like, we're not home. But every moment becomes a homeschooling moment. And so I, don't, I never homeschooled between like 9 and 3. I never homeschooled between like 12 and 2. There were times in the day that we had chunks of schooling, like 30 minutes, maybe 45. We homeschooled a lot in the car. My daughter is an all-star cheerleader. We used to drive to Livermore four days a week for practice. We homeschooled in the car. That's where we got a lot of our homeschooling done. So we homeschooled on Saturdays. We homeschooled on Sundays. We uh, Sometimes her dads would take certain pieces of homeschooling on the weekends when I worked on Saturdays. So People do it in different ways, and I call it for the working parent, you got to find those chunks of time that work, and then the chunks of time that they're not with you, you can, if they're independent enough, they can work on some stuff, whether that's online stuff, whether that's workbook stuff, they can do art and crafts. I, I would have a little, I have a little bin for my son, he's five since we've been sheltering, and he's very active. We have a bin, and in this bin, we've got things he can do when mommy's on a phone conference that has, she has been during sheltering, and dad's, you know, we're working, or he's outside of the home. So we'd have a bin for the younger, when she was younger than now, my five-year-old. These, you need to do school right now because it's school time for you and you get to pick what's school time for you and so having those things a media is wonderful it can be abused as we all know but there are some wonderful online things that while you're on a conference call your kids can watch I love alpha blocks and um, number blocks if you haven't seen those um, those are two of my favorite favorite things my son is in kindergarten already knows how to add and subtract so I didn't do it um, you know number blocks did it so I think that it's thinking about chunks of time, thinking about um, um, uh, finding community, um, finding co-ops if you want to be with other people. Um, I had a friend who ran an art co-op one year. She did all the planning. I paid for the supplies. We'd go there once a week, and I didn't teach the art. I helped you know, clean up and do other things. So there's all these different things that whatever your child wants to do or you would like them to do, in the Bay Area especially, there is a, a tremendous amount of opportunity, some for free, some that cost money. If budget is an issue for you, many homeschool programs and classes um, will let you be the TA, um, like you help the teacher set up or you help the teacher buy supplies or you help the teacher grade and then they let you have the class for free. Not everybody does that, but a lot of people do that. So if budget's an issue, there's always ways to work around that. One year, I taught kindergarten so my daughter could go free in second grade to a two-day program so there's just different options so many options I think you really bring up um, a couple of points number one that you're an unschooler um, it's mm -hmm. a little different um, I'm gonna be bringing people on with different uh, philosophies on, on homeschooling um, so you believe in core academics and then letting the kid decide how they learn what they learn as they go naturally mm -hmm. um, we're a little bit more structured because I am that way naturally so if, if we do that, we'll just, yeah, for me, it won't work, but, but I, I love the, I feel like I pick up from different places. Um, uh, but one thing you did mention that was huge, which I really want to people to, to hear is that you become a facilitator, like of your, of your child. So, um, for those of you who say like, my kid wants to learn French, I don't know French, I can't learn French. You get to pick and choose who's teaching them French. 
You get to pick and choose who's teaching them piano. You get to pick and choose what it looks like. What is your day going to be structured with? This is huge, Elizabeth, because your child, especially for those of you who have kids who are extremely talented at a sport or something that traditional school would just really, um, a lot of actors and, and athletes stay homeschool because, mm -hmm. um, because of the flexibility and the freedom. Mm -hmm. So I guess what, what I'm saying is you guys, um, as homeschoolers, we don't have to be the experts in everything. I mean, yeah. think about the way people who manage huge projects, do they know how to do every single little thing? No, but they, they know how to, they know how to um, delegate and facilitate. And um, I love that. And Maya is amazing. I actually got to uh, mentor her a little bit um, when she, she moved away she's a professional <laughs> cheerleader um a competitive cheer i um i had no idea what competitive cheer it was and so she invited me to a competition one time and i thought oh, okay cool pom-poms right and i'm like what these guys are athletes this is intense um it yeah. is. so facilitator i love it you you get to really just navigate and elizabeth one of the things i love about you is all the tools you provide for parents Mm -hmm. So, um, every Monday, is it that you give a free? Yeah. So in my group, um, on Monday nights at 7 30 PM Pacific time, um, I do a free training every week in August and I'll do that throughout the year, but in August, it's going to be on Monday nights and I teach some very solid tools and information. And so last night I did, um, focus and concentration for kids and teens and it was great and if you can't catch it live there's a the replay stays in the group and you can go back and look at the replay if you'd like to catch it that way and so that's in my successful parents successful teachers group and then uh, this Saturday I'm launching um, a homeschooling boot camp and so I have a four-hour homeschooling boot camp where you can plan your entire fall semester in four hours and so everything curriculum schedule uh, anything all everything in four hours I'm going to coach you through it online and it's actually more of a coaching session than an information session where we're going to leave with a plan for from here to the end of December and so we're going to do one session this Saturday and if you can't catch this Saturday there's going to be a second session August 22nd it's from 9 to 1 Pacific time and so that's another thing we're doing and then the last thing in the fall a lot of people have asked me to do coaching groups so we're going to have um, by age coaching groups that meet twice a month and so we'll meet twice a month online and um, based on your child's age and you can pop in there and you can ask seek support help whatever it is that you knew that's specific to your child and so those are a couple ways and then in the group um, there's also I post resource and research and um, other speakers and other things that may be interested to homeschoolers and non homeschoolers from discipline Monday night we're gonna do feeding um, I'm a certified feeding dynamics um, instructor and trainer and so we're gonna be doing picky eating and how to get nutrition into kids uh, in a good way in a fun way without you know all heck breaking loose at the dinner table so um, so yeah so we're gonna be doing that Monday night that's the topic yep okay awesome um thank you so much for being on elizabeth sure. uh, i really appreciate just your expertise and just your experience i got I, i'm glad i got a chance to interview as you interview you as a mom and as a homeschooling expert because um you are you know an educator and a professor you're teaching the future of our um child care workers who are out there so you're the perfect person to teach us too um uh -huh. Yes, I had one more thing I wanted to ask you, but that's great. You touched on community, building community, find your tribe. Um, Can I mention, oh, and I'll mention something when you're finished. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, you guys, find your tribe. I'm bringing you all these experts, and dude, we are experts. Right? I'm an expert in my family. <laughs> She's an expert in her family. You're going to be an expert in your family by the end. You're the one that's dealing with your family the most. Um, that being said, I'm hoping to bring on these different people with different homeschooling philosophies, different backgrounds, um, different reasons for homeschooling, um, just so you can get a taste of what's out there and find your tribe so you feel supported and you engage and you don't give up because it's it's an amazing it's amazing to be able to slow down and enjoy enjoy this process mm -hmm. it goes 
it goes by really quick. My daughter's going to be senior and I have no idea how that happened. I have no idea that she's turning 18 in September. And I just remember yesterday starting homeschooling and it's gone by really, really quick, a lot quicker than I would like. Um, of course, there's always college or training or whatever comes next, but it, it really does go quite quickly, um, which is why we chose to homeschool. We actually pulled Maya out of kindergarten. She was in a private school because I felt that life was going really fast. And that's why I chose to homeschool at the time. I thought I'd only do it through third grade and ended up doing it the whole time because she became a competitive athlete and that worked for our schedule. If you know anything about athletes who are seeking to be really the best in their sport. And so um, that's why we did it. But you mentioned something really important, Elizabeth, and that is that um, one of the things that really concerns me about our society is that we live in a society that convinces parents that they are not experts in their own children. And I believe that all parents are experts in their own children, meaning I believe you know what you want for your kids. I believe you know what you want them to be like as adults. I, you, They're your children, whether through adoption, whether you have them, whether they're foster kids, whether you're grandkids, you know, right? And you do need help and support and tools. Even I do, and I, I, I teach this, but I still have a tribe and a community of support that I turn to for help. But I think that the biggest um, lie that maybe going on in your head is that I can't do this and the reality is you can do this with the proper tools with the proper support and taking it one day at a time I remember um, meeting a mom who'd been homeschooling for many years when I first started homeschooling Maya was in kinder and I said how do you do this and she didn't work but she had four kids um, and I said how do you do this and she says you only have to stay one day ahead of them and that was my philosophy and still is that is still my philosophy like I one day, one day, one lesson ahead of them. And that has always, I have, I am not one of these super duper Elizabeth know this organized person. I'm organized in some ways, but I can't plan the whole month curriculum. And I just talked to my daughter and I said, Hey, we got to start planning the new year. Cause there's a lot to entail. And I said, Hey, let's get together. Like we're going to get together tomorrow, but like, I don't have it all mapped out. I just know a key things of what we got to get done now. Like she's got to get her printer working, which is really important. Um, um, but, but like, like, don't think that you have to ha and, and have this planned out for 30 days. You literally, if you could do a week, that'd be nice. But if you can just do one day, and I have to tell you when children are little, particularly when they're um, 12 and under, it is not that serious. And I don't mean it's not serious. I just mean it is not life altering if one day or two days or a week. Um, my daughter had such severe learning disabilities that we went six months and we didn't do any school, any former school, because she was very traumatized. It was very difficult for her. Um, and so, and guess what? She's reading at level now. And guess what? She's living on her own and she's uh, talking about the future and she. At, at 16, she went to go live on her own and with those family. So the moral of the story is don't let society and don't let others convince you. That you she's very mature. She is. So mature. And when I say living at 16, it sounded funny. But she's 16 and she's mature and she is someone. I don't think I would. I think we were at a beach and I helped Maya convince you to let her go. I don't think I would. <laughs> You did. I, oh I, my God! It was I, your I, fault. <laughs> no, I remember. I remember sitting there saying, "Elizabeth, you know, I mentor a lot of teens. I don't think I would trust anybody but Maya at sixteen to go away on her own. You have to let her go. She could totally make a world team." And you're like, "Elizabeth," I'm like. I remember with your mother, and you, this is all your fault, so I should be mad at you because, yes, I was not completely sold on letting my child go in the beginning, and my child went to Miss Elizabeth, and they, and she betrayed me as a mother. She broke the mother code of always siding with the mother, but you know what? I'm so glad, Elizabeth, and that's what we mean by having a community, right, a tribe of other mothers and other dads who pour into the life of your kids because if you try to do this on your own, um, you'll, you'll last for a little bit but they'll get to a point where you really do need some feedback and um, I think that um, I'm glad that I listened to other people I'm glad um, that I had people who spoke into my life around my own child and that just takes a little time and right now with COVID just I means you got to reach out via zoom for now or you know one-on-one -on -one, but it is possible to build community online and there are 
right now there's so much going on. Um, I have a friend, and I'm sure Elizabeth will give you the info. You should invite Chrissy Allen to come and talk. Definitely. She's doing a, she's doing a, and she's launching on August 17th a five day worldwide. She's got speakers from all over the world homeschooling Christian conference. So um, I'll be speaking. I'll be doing three workshops. My husband will be doing a workshop. If you want to get your husband's, he's doing how to support your wife when they're homeschooling. So yeah. He's doing He's doing a workshop. So um, definitely, um, you know, watch these things and, and don't believe the lie. I used to believe that everybody else was a better homeschooler than me, right? And guess what? There are, I have friends that are remarkable who do amazing things with their kids. Whenever I see Miss Elizabeth post something and she's got her kids all organized, I'm like, oh my God. And then my five-year-olds, you know, running around writing on the walls. So, so there's always going to be, don't compare your homeschooling journey and your family to anybody else's family because every family is unique and every family is called with a different mission and each kid is called for a different purpose in life and so we need to remember that not one size fits all not even if you have multiple children i have friends of like nine children and they're all very different so never believe that you have to do it the way somebody else would do it what miss elizabeth's doing is bringing perspective and resources and tools and then you get to choose what works for you and your kid love it our kids don't have to be in a box they can they get do whatever they want. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. It is always a pleasure to have you on. And for anyone out there who's gotten some flack about, you know, homeschooling's too tough or think you're not enough, we believe in you and we'll be here to support you. Just check out any of our communities. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Have a good day.